Welcome, I am Aloy Andalus from NBFX.com and Effective TDs, and we will see some examples that I use all the time to accelerate my workflow in 3ds Max. The first trick I will show you is about the timeline. Control plus Alt plus left click, you will change the start of the timeline. Control Alt and right click, you will change the end of the timeline, and Control plus Alt plus middle mouse click, you will pan around. When you have an animation with dot, you move one frame in advance, with comma, you move backwards, and if you press the arrow key next to your dot, you will play the animation, when you press it again, you will pause the animation. We have an animation here with uh, three keys. If we want to stretch these three keys, we make it faster or slower, you can do right click, configure, show selection range, and now here below we will have this selection range that will cover all the keys that we have selected and we can stretch making it faster or a slower or animation so now will be way faster if we want to repeat this animation we can open our curve editor edit controller out of range we can choose a loop this will loop our animation so we'll never stop but on top of that, you can add a multiplier curve. Apply multiplier curve, control M, and on the angle, you will have this multiplier curve. So we can add uh, a key, one here and one here. And let's say that this will be instead of one, will be 0 0.1. So what we will see now is that we will have the bend always applied, but at a certain point, it will reduce a lot the amplitude. We have now a fast way to create objects in 3ds Max without needing to go to command panel. Simply press X and type what you want to create, let's say a box, and you will create a box. If we want a sphere, you simply need to start writing what you want to create and automatically will create the object. If we have one object selected, instead of creation, we will add modifiers. So it's easier than ever to add whatever you want without needing to look on the modifier panel or creation panel. If you want to offset the number, we can press R and add the number that you want to add. So let's say 10. This will add a value of 10 to the previous number that we had. You can also do a rest. So if you press R, negative 15, it will subtract 15 to this value. If you want to create more complex operations, if you press Ctrl and N, you will get an expression evaluator, so you can do complex expressions there, like divided by 2, reduce 10, and you will paste the result here. For a fast viewport manipulation, remember that with T you will jump on the top view, P you will jump on the perspective view, from F to the front view, and if you want to access any other view, like right view, if you press V, you will access the menu with all the views, so we can go to the right view. Remember that you want to zoom in into a specific selection with Z, you will jump to the, your selection. With I, you will move your view where your cursor are. And if you want to isolate an object, Alt Q will enter in, on isolate mode. If you want to know which objects are linked to each object, you can use page up and page down. So these objects are linked to this object here, and this object to this one, and this to this one. But if you don't know that, press page up, will select your parent, page up will select your parent, page up will select the parent. And if you go page down, will select your children. If we need to instance a heavy resolution model thousands of times, normally you will use Frost with V-Ray Instancer or V-Ray Instancer, but there is another way to do it. Let's say that we place a low poly object where we want. Add a substitute modifier. This what we'll do is to select this object for another object, and you can choose if you want to substitute in the viewport or only on render time, so uncheck in viewport and select your object. Uh, let's it ask if you want to apply the material, let's say yes. So now when you render that, you will have in viewport a low res object, but on your render, it will display the high res mesh, and it will use very few RAM. I am using 1.2 gigs. If we need to do change on multiple objects at the same time, and they are copies of themselves, it's not instance. Max is not very good at that on the UI, you will not have anything. 
but you have a listener here and it's quite easy to do basic stuff. Let's say that we want to change the height for all these objects, select everything. With dollar sign, you call the selection, then write the value that you want to change, in this case height. Let's add this to 25, so all your values will change. If we want to know the name of one value, let's say height sex, simply change the value and it will appear here, height sex equal to. So now if we want to increase the height sex, let's do dollar sign height height sex sex equal 10 and you will have all your objects with um, the same values. If you want to add a modifier on this object, select the objects. Let's hit add modifier. Where we want to add this modifier is on our selection, so dollar sign. And we open parentheses or the name of our modifier Ben, open close parentheses and close it. And now we should have a Ben modifier applied and its instance over all the objects. Let's say that we want to change uh, some of these Ben modifiers. Let's say that we want these Ben modifiers to be unique and we want to adjust this will be different. And now we read the thing about that and we want to modify all these angles at the same time. So if we need to access this data, the angle, we will write dollar sign or selection dot ben, it's the name of our modifier, and our sublevel dot angle is what we want to change, equal minus 15. And now all they change at the same value.